we are glad to be here. We're glad to share with you as we uh, continue to study this Word of God. Uh, today, we are, we are all the way in this book uh, written by uh, Tony Evans. He's a good writer. He writes, he's wrote, written many, many books, uh, he's preached many sermons, and advises people. He has a, he has a wonderful preaching daughter uh, and, and, and son. Uh, and he has a wonderful ministry in uh, Dallas, Texas. And he writes this book about uh, uh, the kingdom focus. And if you study, study other book, books, I think he's got the kingdom man, the kingdom woman. <clears throat> but he teaches that. Uh, he, we also go down into chapter 8. <clears throat> and the, the, the chapter is uh, more, more, more than a feeling. And uh, we, are, we are blessed to have that. We are blessed to have that. He's talking about more than a feeling. He, he talks about, uh, he started off talking about uh, dramas that we see on TV. Uh, that we have come across so many episodes where love has gone bad. Uh, what started as, as an innocent attraction and flirtation turns into a disaster of epic proportion. I'm a fan of uh, Young and the Restless, and right now I'm watching Chelsea and Adam with that little flirtation could turn into disaster. And we see that on TV, but when we watching it on TV, we got hindsight to know, uh, to watch how it's easy to get out of a toxic relationship. And, uh, but uh, 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 we see that, we know it's easy, but Watching these seemingly loving relationships can turn into situations of abuse, of mind control, of manipulation, and many, many more of eye-opening proportion. While these stories, movies are typically, typically extreme examples, most of us can pinpoint connection in our own lives where we made choices. You know, when I was studying that, I thought I had to go back in my life and thought about all of the choices I've made. We've made choices uh, uh, that ultimately usher in some destruction, destructions in our lives. Maybe it was a person. Maybe it was a desire, a dream, a passion, a pursuit. Uh, maybe it was a, a hobby and maybe even a conspiracy theory. And a lot of people today, especially in our society in America, are getting caught up with conspiracy theory. And uh, if y'all notice, one of, your, one of our favorite actors, and you watch all his movies, Will Smith. Will Smith movies is dealing with conspiracy theories. And, and I could name a lot of them, you know, but watch, just watch the movie, and that's what his movies are based on. Because you can tell, man, you can tell he got so much control over uh, production and all of that. It's coming from him. It's coming from him, he, whether he acts in it or not. Uh, but, but, but as time, when you get in those decisions and those relationships, the connection, that connection proved to be destructive to your emotions, your focus, your finances, and even, even your relationship, and many, many more. Uh, and some people get trapped. On TV, it seemed easy to get out of that relationship. But some people get trapped into those relationships. Even after all this time, uh, we uh, channel, channel, I think it's channel 34 with those got a lot of those relationship drama. My wife likes, those, likes that channel. Uh, I tell her it's too much drama for me, so I don't watch the movies there. But uh, uh, she watches it. But even if we've been warned for years about those toxic relationships, yet some people are still caught up in it. Amen? Got caught up in it. And it brings destruction in their lives. God speaks to us in his word about some fatal attraction. And there is one that we find in 1 John chapter 2. We find a relationship that God is passionate about. And that relationship, uh, 
he, he, he talks about a love that he really hates, and it comes up. It is a love of the world. That's the relationship that God cannot stand. He said, uh, when, when we entertain this love, it creates a barrier between the presence of God and, 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 and our experience with his presence. Uh, it results in a wealth of disaster. Uh, roll up in, within this love is the world, the love of the world. God, is, God got a problem with that. Uh, it's, it's got some revocation, some consequences that comes with that love of the world. It's, it's, it's a problem for God because he loves us so much. He enjoys our relationship with him so much that when we get into this thing with the world, it separates us from God. Many Christians, and a lot of times we do, we want to know why God seems to be so far away. What's wrong with our connection, our relationship with God? Even if we are into religious activities in pursuit, which mean study and mean coming to church and participating, yet and still we ask the question, why God doesn't seem to hear my prayers? I would like to suggest that one reason for this lies in the fact that we have a fatal attraction with the world. And I like that movie, Fatal Attraction. That's, that, that describes our relationship. That describes this whole lesson today. If you just watch the movie, Fatal Attraction. It, it, it is loving the world. It is, it is in loving the world that all hell can break loose in our lives. When we focus on what the world offers, we lose focus in what matters. And by allowing ourselves to be coded by this one connection, we're going to stall something. We're going to block something. We block the favor and the blessings of God. Where does that come from, preacher? It simply comes when you lose that relationship, that connection, that experience with God. When there is a barrier between us and, and God. We stole whatever blessing that God comes in our way. First John 2, 15 and 17, I know you put it up, brother, but put it up again. It simply tells us, uh, uh, it is, it's the critical truth, that God instructs us plainly against this love, not the world. And I, I can just say that, love, not the world. If any man is in love with the world, that's what it says. Then the, the love of the Father is not in, in him. It's clear. That we, 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 what we just read, what we've seen on the screen now, that we are not to love the world and neither to love the things of the world. But the question comes, what are the things of the world? The Greek word for world is cosmos. And I like that word. It can be expressed as the word cosmos. When we talk about the physical cosmos, we are talking about the earth. In fact, the world can reflect any number of things. And I like this. This is what he says. It reflects what? Finances. It reflects politics, sports, and fashions. And I asked my wife a question this morning. I said, when Paul visited Moss Hill, in the Bible, Moss Hill was where the men would get together and discuss the affairs of the world the affairs of, think, of things that are going on today. And I asked her, I said, what, what is Moss Hill among the African-American brothers? And she said, I don't know. I said, the barbershop? <laughs> I said, go into the barbershop. You hear them discussing, and same thing with the sisters. Go into the beauty shop, into the nail shop, discussing the affairs of the world. And there's a lot of other places that I, I told her, even among preachers, when we have our studies just among ourselves, go in there. And you'll find us not only discussing the words, the word of God, but also the affairs of the world. It's, and, and, and that's our most here. And this is where you ought to get to uh, take the opportunity to, uh, 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 to bring in the word of God. I've been praying because I changed Barbara, and the one I go to now got from 
little boys to teenagers to very young adults. And I say to myself sometimes, boy, you're in the wrong barbershop. <laughs> because I cannot keep up with them. But surprisingly, they, they discuss the affairs of the world. They, they, it surprises me. Uh, and I be waiting for my, to, to get in. Because I don't want to get in and shut it down. I got to get in and get into the conversation and, and try to steer it in the way that they should go. And uh, uh, the young man that cuts my hair, I used to pick him up and bring him to Sunday school. Every Sunday morning, we, I would bring him to Sunday school. And I'm trying to get him back to the church. Amen? Uh, uh, certainly, this, this would be a good thing. Listen to this. God is certainly concerned about us loving the world for one particular reason. And simply in 1 John 5 and 19, he, the world can be defined. Is simply as the system headed by Satan that leaves God out. John, 1 John 5 and 19, we know that. We know that. We know that we are of God. And, 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 and that the world lies in the power of the evil one. Listen to the model prayer. Lord, deliver us from evil. And somebody mentioned to me that Pastor, really what that saying is from the evil one. So I find myself, I always do my prayer with the model prayer first. And, and I find myself saying, Lord, deliver us from the evil one. The world lies under the influence of the devil. The world, and the, don't the Bible, read the Bible, it calls him the man of the world. That's the devil. Greater is he that's in you than him that's in the world. That's Jesus over the devil. It's the Holy Ghost over the Spirit of God over the Spirit of the devil. Greater is he now. Watch this. God is the one who kicked him out of heaven. When he kicked him out, the devil didn't have nowhere else to go. And I always say he was falling and he had nothing to catch on to. He happened to pass by the earth. So he grabbed hold of the earth. And the Bible, and don't tell me I'm wrong, because the Bible said, woe is to the people of the earth. War are the people of the earth, for the devil has come to you. And I say, Lord, why you didn't kick him somewhere else so he could not come to the earth? And guess what we find when we open our Bible up in the book of Genesis? Who do we find beside Eve and Adam and the serpent? The devil. Amen? So he was there. Help me somebody. Even before the beginning of the earth, he was there on the earth. He was here on the cosmos interfering. What is his purpose? His purpose is to drive us away from God. How he can do that? To make us fall in love with the world. He, he, he does, uh, uh, and watch in, in, in John, I don't know if I, I think I did get, get that one, but King St. John chapter 15, 17 and verse 15. Uh, 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 Jesus was praying that prayer. And, you know, he said, Father, I didn't ask you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to keep them while they are in the world. And that's my prayer for number 45. Said, Lord, I ain't asking you to take them out. Just move them on the side somewhere. Let them go play golf somewhere because he's messing up this country. And, and, he, and he's got a hole on this country that's hard to break. But Lord, I'm not asking you to move him. Just move him on the side. Take the influence of the devil out of it. Is because, and don't say that, preacher, you know, well, it's affecting the church. It's separating the people of God. Every time I pray that prayer, I say, I say to myself, Lord, there is another brother of the faith that's praying that Lord give him more influence over America. And I say, Lord, have mercy. Prayer against prayer. God's people against God's people. Amen? And I say, Lord, you, you, and I go into, I shift into gear, into another level, and I continue to pray. Amen? His will, remember in the prayer, his will be done on earth as it is already in heaven. The direction that the instruction we get it's not to fall in love with the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. The world is not calling all of us to retreat to some monastery as some do, have some have done, and go into a faraway land 
away from everybody, goes into violence of, of silence. The love, uh, to love something, to love the world, or to love anything, is to seek its highest goal for an, an advancement of that thing. It is to look for guidance and instructions from that thing. And let this thing dictate to us what is best for us. Uh, 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 love, it seeks to please, it, uh, uh, to please it. Come on. It seeks to please it first rather than to please yourself. That's when you love a thing. To love the world is not merely related to our emotion and our affection, y'all. To love the world means that your decision, all of your decision with an S, is aligned under the world's value system above all. And if you do that, then you are under the influence of Satan. You're under the influence of the devil. When you are faced with a decision to follow God or to follow the world, your choice will reflect which one you love the most. Matthew 6 and 33. I'm going to go quick on you, Brother King. Matthew 6 and 33. God does not wish for, to be second to his arch enemy, the evil one, when it comes to your decision. 6 and 33 says it plainly. What to do first? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He said that, and they're saying this, that when you put God first, he jumps over into Romans 8 and 28. When you put God first, he guides and he directs us according to his will. And in Romans 8 and 28, before we get to Romans 12 and 2, he causes all things to work together for his glory and for our good. He gets into Romans 12 and 2. <clears throat> He describes the growth process of a child of God. He described the growth. God desires what God desires from us. This is what he wants. He wants its outcome when it speaks of the goal of transformation. Rereading that and be not conformed. To what? To the world. Jesus, God is saying you cannot grow when you're or, 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 or being conformed to the world. You got to be transformed where it's all in the mind, in the renewing of your mind. Transformation, we said it last week, is not leaving the place, but it is changing in the place. So when you change your mind, you're still in this body. You're still in this cosmos. You're still on this cosmos, but you are different. As one of my friends says that it was my roommate from college, when he looked at me, uh, uh, he said, man, you different. I said, what you mean I'm different? We just started talking. We hadn't seen each other in about 10, 12 years. He said, man, you look different. You are different. And uh, he knew I had been with minister for many years, but we were friends together. And I said, if you think I changed, you ought to see her. She's different also. That transformation, but we're still here on the cosmos. Amen? What does it mean to, to, co to conform? To conform to the world means to be shaped by the world and the world's value because the word conform means to be pressured from the outside, to be shaped by something on the outside of you. It is the same thing at the potter's house. Jeremiah explained it good. It watched, while he watched the potter, he takes the clay and shape it into what he wants it to be. So when we conform to the world, we conform to the pressure of the world to make us into what the world wants us to be, not into what we should be and what God wants us to be. Amen? So that's what it means. We got to drop this thing. You cannot truly embrace, as something else he brings up in 1 John 2 and 15, you cannot truly embrace the love of both the world and God simultaneously. I wish I would have put that other question. Watch with John 2 and 15. If anybody loves the world, he have not the love of the Father in it. And, and Dr. Evans says this, here is the cost. Here is what it costs. To love the world is to relinquish the love for God. Please note that there are exceptions here. It doesn't matter who you are. If you love the world, 
you truly don't love God. That's what God says. What Jesus told them, either you're going to love me <laughs> or you're going to hate me. Come on. Either you're going to love. You can't have, what, two masters. Uh, you either going to love one or hate the other. And he's saying, they're saying the same thing right there. It's going to cost your relationship with one of them. If you love God, it's going to cost you your relationship with the devil. And if you love the devil, it will cost your relationship with God. And nobody, I don't care how bad a person is, some of them, very few of them, that would identify that self as a friend of the devil. Amen? That's a friend of the devil. I one of my friends tell me, man, he said, man, I, 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 I know the way I live here is not right. He said, if I die and go to hell and I come back, I'm going to live the same way again. I said, thank you. You just said why a lot of people are in hell and they ain't going to never leave hell. Because if you take them out of hell, they're not going to change anyway. God, God is going to take them and go put them back in the, God is going to take them and put them back into the, into the world, put them back into, into, uh, into hell because they're going to come on earth and raise more hell. Come on, y'all. And you look at them and say, well, God should have left you in hell. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, uh, God, God did not save us to fall in love with the world. No, he didn't. He saved us to deliver us from the world, even while we are functioning within the world. One of the reasons many Christians cannot and do not come in contact with the manifest, the manifest presence, the showing presence of Christ and his reality in their lives is because they want to hold on to the world, and you cannot have both of them. You got to give up one of them. Choose you this day. That was Joshua told him, whom you going to serve? Huh? Were you going to serve the small G-O-D-S on the other side, or are you going to serve God? And he said, he said I'm going to declare a decree right now. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Uh, I, I, and I know y'all hear, uh, and I say her name, or I say her name on tape, uh, Minister uh, Crystal uh, Woods Thomas. And I like what she put on Facebook when she was talking about her husband uh, for his birthday. She said she called him the priest of her house. And I said, Lord have mercy. Brothers, we got to look at the fact of what God has laid on us and gives us the opportunity Amen. And we have denied this opportunity. So God will take it and give it to somebody else. Paul told the Jews. He said, you know, I was just reading that yesterday, I think. He said, since you don't want him, since you don't want Christ, I'm going to leave and go take it to the Gentiles. He said, matter of fact, they're more excited about Jesus Christ, and he's Jewish, and you not. And he has come to, to save, to save. He came to you first. Let me tell you, God, man, some people... It, it concerns me when, when, when especially these elected officials, because they'll, they'll do anything to get elected and say anything to get elected, act like they love the Jews so much, but yet they hate the Jews as much as anybody else. And we, 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 it was a time when we identified with them during the civil rights movement. They walk with us, we walk with them. But some way, somewhere, somehow, this is how the devil works. We've been separated. Help me, somebody. We've been separated from one another. And, and we, when we was a team, when we came together, we were able to stand up against those that hate us, who don't want us around them, and don't want us to have the same opportunity with them as long as we separate it. Like, I like Dr. William Barber. He's he, he saying he, he picks up something from Martin Luther King. He said, if the poor, and he said, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about color here. I'm talking about poor, no matter what color you get. When we come together, we can stop these other people from oppressing us. You know, so I, I like the brother. I like the, what the brother is saying. And there's nothing new. Martin Luther King, I think that's what killed him. When he started think, start talking about uh, delivering the poor, and stopped talking about just delivering the brothers and the sisters, but all the poor come together, the working class people. When he brought us, when he started to bring us together, what did, when did he get killed? When he went to a strike for garbage people. And then they say, that's enough. He already opposed Vietnam. Now he's talking about the poor getting together. He's got to go. 
and they took him out. They took him out. And that's the reason why, amen? And this is, this is, this is coming time for me to be coming close. We got to watch ourselves. There's a trap when you, when, you, when you fall in love with the world. God warns us in first chapter, first John chapter 2 to stay away from the world. Because when you get the world in the love of the world in your heart, you have not the love of God. John, he's not playing in there. Uh, James is even, even more intense about us being on the Lord's side. But, but, but he says something that, uh, watch this now. There is something, let me say this and I'm going to go away. There is something that when you love the world, you cannot lose that legal relationship with God. Why? Because it's a based on the atonement of Jesus Christ, which means one minute. When Christ died, he brought us together with, Christ, with God. He brought us back together. But when we peeping out in the world, we lose out on the experience of a relationship with God. We lose in favor and we lose in blessings when we do that. And there is some trap. Let me close with this. There are traps about loving the world, treats. The devil used treats to trap us in the world. Well, listen to the example, and it's, it's certainly is true. I saw it on TV where a man took, took some sweets and put it in a hole, and, 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 and a monkey is watching him. Uh, he's watching him, and another man took a jar and put sweets inside of the jar, and the monkey wanted to get to the sweet. What he does, he sticks his hand in the hole, which, which, which fits his hands like this. And once he catch hold of the treat, he closes his hand and tries to pull it out because when he closes his hand, his hand, his hand become too big to get it out the hole or get it out the jaw. But he so much do not want to let go, does not want to let go of that treat that he would let himself get caught and get trapped and put it in the cage. And that's, that's what it is. He, all he got to do is let go of the treat, pull it out. But he will not let it out. He closed it. By the first time I saw that on TV, I was fascinated with that. Man, let it go. You know, he going to trap you, going to catch you, let it go. But he would not let it go because he didn't want to lose the treat. This is the way we hold on to the world. The devil got some treat. Uh, I, I, like, I like what uh, uh, Dr. Evans says. He said it's some good treat. He said it's some loving treats, some luscious treats, some delicious, sparkling, beautiful treat that we hold on to. And all we have to do is let go of the world, and we would remain free. Amen? There is, there is a time, there is another time that God would provide for us. Let it go. Let the world go. But no, we hold on, and we get caught and we get trapped, and we get put in a cage by the devil. The devil said, that's you. This is what you choose. This is what you chose. This is what you choose. This is you. And God has given us the opportunity now. Love not the world. Close your mind and your eyes to the world. Amen? And how do the devil, one way, how do the devil get to our soul? Through our eyes. The eyes see. Amen? The eyes is a window to the world. So the eyes see. What the devil told Eve, he said, look. And the Bible says she behold the fruit, and it looks good. That's what she said. It looked good. So that window to our soul is the eyes. And we need to be careful about that. We talk about the mouth and the mind, but watch the eyes. Amen? Watch the eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that we don't put the world before you. Help us to understand and remind us, the Holy Ghost, remind us, Holy Ghost, when we are starting to put the things of the world before you, Lord. And, and there are times, Lord, when we take the things of the world and make it abusive instead of those things which mean to be helpful to us. And we pray, Lord, let us see the difference. Let us see the difference. Open our eyes to the difference. Transforming means the renewing of the mind. 
Open our eyes, my Heavenly Father. We thank you and we bless you for this church, this ministry, this media ministry. Bless you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. If I be